Uh, I want to talk about a number of problems connected with publications. Uh, I think these are very serious problems uh, that we're reaching. And I'd like to confine myself to uh, to the question of cost, the number of journals, commercial versus society, and the, que and the problem with libraries. Uh, first, the number of journals. I think everybody's aware of the number of, the increase in the number of journals in, say, statistics. But I don't know that you realize the extent of the increase in journals for libraries in general. For example, just to, to clarify the point, if you look at medical journals in the world, in 1960, there were 2,300 medical journals in the world. There are now 23,000. So what we're talking about is a problem uh, that libraries are facing, and the medical, the medical uh, profession is facing this proliferation much, in a much stronger way than we are, because it's a much more critical problem for them. Now, Let's talk about cost. Uh, by the way, all of these are interrelated. Uh, let's talk about cost. And I can only speak for the United States. But one of the problems that the libraries have faced in the way of cost is that uh, with the dollar being weakened and the number of journals increased, the cost uh, to libraries has jumped dramatically. It's jumped to a point where libraries are beginning to cancel subscriptions. Let's talk about cost, which that, that compares uh, commercial with regular. Uh, there are a number of publishers, uh, commercial publishers, uh, who charge a phenomenal amount of money for journals. And this, of course, is, will affect all of us. Uh, let me give you the names. Uh, there's Gordon and Breach, uh, Pergamon, I forgot how to spell it. There's O-N. Uh, there's North Holland. There's Elsevier. Uh, there's probably Plenum. Uh, there may be one or two others. Marshall Decker. Uh, they're not, Marcel Decker is not a serious uh, problem for journals. They, they, they do charge a lot, but it's not in the same league as this group. And I'll tell you in a moment. Uh, there's a second group, and the second group is Marcel Decker, uh, Springer, Academic, uh, etc. These are not the main culprits, but I have to give you an idea of, of a main culprit. Uh, there's a journal called Stochastics. It's an ordinary, regular journal that deals with stochastic processes. Can anybody give me a guess on the cost per year? Uh, libraries, li libraries, libraries. Don't answer if you know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I want to guess. Good guess. Try again. Three thousand. How much? Three thousand. Uh, and we're close. What three thousand per year is? For per year. Three thousand. How many issues? How many oh, it's, it's, it's a, I don't remember. It's a regular journal. It's, it's uh, half the size of the annals. Uh, it's, it's, a regular, it's a regular journal. But uh, a journal that we're all familiar with is linear algebra and its applications. 
thick journal. But what is the price per year? Hmm? No, I, George knows too much. He shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> he shouldn't answer any of these. Uh, the answer is is approximately fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, now, Stanford University has canceled all of the Gordon and Breach journals. Uh, there is a suit. The Gordon and Breach has sued the physics, the American Physical Association, because. The American Physical Association made a comparison of costs, and uh, they they published these. And uh, Gordon and Breach argued that in some way it was a restraint of trade or something like that. I don't know the legal arguments, but I know there's a suit, and it's one of the reasons why the American Math Society has left out Gordon and Breach in its recent comparison of costs. But now, let's talk about commercial versus uh, <coughs> society journals. Now, what happened, I think, in the history, this is my own impression, what happened in the history is that it was much easier for, society, for commercial publishers to start a journal than it was for a society. The society would have to go through a council, a board of directors, it'd have to have agreement. And if a society, if somebody brought up the issue, why don't we have a journal on non-parametric statistics uh, to say the American Statistical Association or to the Institute of Mathematical Statistics or to the Royal Statistical Society, it doesn't matter which society. Then the question is, well, if we have a journal on non-parametrics, why shouldn't we have a journal in time series, in multivariate, in uh, sequential, etc.? The result of that is, that the societies did not publish specialized journals. They published general journals. The Annals of Mathematical Statistics, Canadian Journal of Statistics, Australian Journal of Statistics, etc. General titles. On the other hand, what the commercial publishers did is they published specialized journals. The Journal of Psychology of the Left Half Brain. And, you know, very specialized items. Now, what that did for you, what that did for, for the profession is, on the one hand, it was very good. On the other hand, it was an entrapment. Because if you work on the left half brain, you must have that journal. And so libraries are now caught because at every university, there will be somebody working on uh, Combinatorics, and so they have to have a journal of combinatorics. There will be some, that is, they cannot cancel them very easily because a faculty member there will want it. So the result is that we're really caught by a lot of the commercial publishers because in the specialization. Uh, I think that if you make a comparison between commercial versus society, the commercial costs more, they're more specialized. The societies cost less, and they're more general. The si societies are more restrictive than commercial publishers. Uh, commercial publishers tend to have an editor in perpetuity, whereas societies have uh, rotating editors. Uh, so the result is the commercial, commercial journals are more subject to bias, to prejudice, to particular interests than society journals, which have a rotating system. Uh, needless to say, the commercial publishers, uh, they don't have the advantage of voluntary help that societies do. <coughs> so uh, there is a trade-off. The libraries are caught. I don't know if, if any of you have been involved with libraries, but I've been involved with Stanford, and we had a list. Uh, we had a cut of 16% on journals. So the question is, what should you cut, and what reason, what rationale should you use for cutting? Well, let me illustrate the difference. Suppose the librarian says to our library committee, we have to cut $1,000. 
So the question then becomes, is it better to cut 10 100, or is it better to cut 1 1,000? Well, it's not at all clear. Librarians like to use uh, a criterion of use. What they will do is they will, use, they will take a journal and they'll see how often people have used that journal. But that's not a good criterion. If you need, uh, if you need an article from the Bulgarian Academy of, Sci of um, Statistics and it will take you two weeks to find it, that's important. On the other hand, the annals of mathematical, the annals of statistics, everybody has it around. So maybe we should cut the journals that everybody owns and not cut the journals that are hard to get. Another point that's happening with libraries is libraries are collecting. Uh, Stanford is one of six libraries. Stanford, Berkeley, Yale, Michigan, uh, I've forgotten the other two, Texas, there's another one. Uh, and what these six libraries are trying is some innovative aspects in how to cut costs because they're all facing the same problem. Now, one of the problems with cutting costs is you might argue, well, look, uh, Stanford and Berkeley are right next door to each other. Uh, why doesn't Stanford buy this journal and Berkeley not buy it? Then they can trade. Well, the problem there is if, if uh, one of these, if North Holland, charges $1,000 for a journal. And if Stanford and a lot of others cut and say, we'll use it from so-and-so, well, North Holland will just raise the price from 1,000 to 1,800. And so what will happen is there will be fewer copies, but the total society cost will be the same. So there's an economic aspect because North Holland has to make a certain income or it's not a viable production. So there is a big problem in how to do this. Uh, of course, the ultimate is that there's only one copy in the United States at the Library of Congress, in which case they'll pay the entire cost. Uh, I mean, that's the, the extreme. <laughs> so I, uh, all I can say is it's a very serious problem. It's not known to most people. Uh, and the question is what to do. Well, in my own instance, I have urged and I have pressed and written letters that societies should increase the number of journals to serve the profession. And so it was actually at my instigation that the Institute of Mathematical Statistics started statistical science, and they've now started the Annals of Applied Probability. Uh, I've urged the American Statistical Society to start a new journal, and they are starting a new journal in uh, statistics of computing, which will start, I think, in a year. Uh, I talked to Peter Bickle, and I understand that the Bernoulli Society is thinking of starting a journal. My point, mainly, is that I would like to do all the commercial journals out of business. Forgive me. Uh, but. I believe, and the reason for that is only, I just don't think we can maintain the number of journals of a very specialized nature. And the reason it's, it's the problem is that the societies don't have enough outlets. If you get a lot of rejections, and I think young people really have to be encouraged to publish more in, and, and be recognized. And this, the society journals don't serve enough of that, of that purpose. Well, I think I've introduced the subject and some of the problems. Uh, needless to say, there are a lot of things that one can, one can discuss further. I'd be glad to answer any questions uh, ab about this. We can have questions afterwards. Whatever you want.